Good afternoon and welcome to Colorado Cat IQ. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, scratching the surface. Sorry, welcome to third dimensions. Series. And uh, we'll have a presenter, Steve Bissett. Um, I'm Victoria Studley, I'll be your moderator. And we're also joined by Namami Sarawala, our expert elite. All right, Steve is one of our uh, technical support specialists based out of Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, I am also a technical support specialist based out of Manchester who will support uh, AutoCAD products. And uh, Nauman is based out of Westchester, Cincinnati. So before we get started, we've got some uh, housekeeping things as normal. Uh, feel free to leave questions in the chat window. We'll answer them as time allows. Uh, this session is being recorded. Uh, the links will be made available for your registration reminder, in your post-webinar survey, and uh, in the chat window. If you check in there, uh, those links have already been posted. Links to the uh, videos and links to the data sets for the webinars. Okay, so here are some of the previous AutoCAD webinars that we presented for you. Back to basics, drafting with precision. Beyond the basics, working with constraints, we talked about uh, an introduction to AutoCAD for the Mac. Um, we did an introdu introduction to rendering. We talked about external references, got a little bit in-depth there um, with strategic uses, tips and tricks. And last week, uh, Volker talked about modify commands. These are all available on our YouTube channel, AutoCAD Exchange. Search for Build Your AutoCAD IQ and they'll come right up, or you can click the link in the chat window. Uh, if you don't know about our AutoCAD Customer Council, um, this is a group that you can join to, um, <clears throat> to be involved in the beta program. Uh, take a look at um, some of the new uh, early ideas, designs, and uh, early builds of the next version of AutoCAD. Uh, you can give your feedback directly to the product team and uh, see your future ideas um, included in the program. So to get involved, you should email autocad.beta at autodesk.com or autocad.lt.council at autodesk.com. Okay. We have a few Autodesk Network featured articles here the top downloads and articles. Uh, just be aware that AutoCAD 2016 Hotfix 1 is available. It covers a couple of uh, uh, plotting and publishing issues and some performance. Um, let's see, there are a couple of downloads here. Service pack for AutoCAD 2015. Um, a link for the free educational software for students and teachers. Uh, and the free viewers that we offer for our different file types. There are some quick links here, hot fixes and service pack downloads for AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. All right, so before we get started, uh, as we normally do, I'll run a couple of polls. We just want to hear a little bit of feedback from you before we jump into the main event. So the first thing we'd like to know Is this your first auto, uh, Autodesk help webinar? I'll leave this open for a few seconds. It looks like most people are returning, so welcome back. And for the few people who are joining us for the first time, uh, welcome. We're happy to have you here. A couple more seconds here, and I'll close it out. And there are your results. All right, second poll here. We'd like to know which AutoCAD application you use. Are you an AutoCAD user, AutoCAD LT? Do you use one of our vertical products like AutoCAD Architecture, MEP, Electrical, Mechanical? Uh, do you use an infrastructure product like Civil 3D or MAP? Or do you use something completely different? AutoCAD, uh, or sorry, uh, Autodesk or non-Autodesk products? 
Um, sorry to interrupt, Victoria. It sounds like there might be some questions about the sound quality on your end. Um, not quite sure if there's anything we can actually do okay. at the moment for that. Um, Are there a lot of questions? or? Uh, it looks like we were cutting in and out, okay. um, but it looks like you might be sounding better. Uh, okay. Can you hear me all right? I certainly can. Um, if anybody else has any uh, issues with the sound, please let us know. I'll try to speak up a little bit. Uh, here are the results of that poll. It's 52% AutoCAD, followed by uh, looks like civil and map, uh, AutoCAD architecture, MEP, electrical, mechanical, and then followed by LT. Okay, this is a new one for this week. We'd like to know, have you joined the AutoCAD Customer Council? Are, is there anybody out there who's uh, already part of that program? All right, so a lot of you are hearing about it for the first time. Uh, we do encourage you to join it. Uh, we would like to know your feedback, and we you know, obviously want to develop a program that uh, works well for you. All right, so it looks like 90, 96% are not involved, but uh, there are a few, a few of you out there who are already participating. Okay, and then one last poll before we get started. Have you ever used 3D modeling or rendering in AutoCAD in another program or never at all? Um, Steve will be taking us through uh, some 3D modeling tips and tricks here today. So, okay, so it looks like most of you have, a little over half. 52% have modeled in AutoCAD before, 22% in another program, and 26% have never used 3D modeling or rendering. All right, back to the presentation for a second. This week's agenda includes surface object tools, and Steve will tell you about the ribbons and the palettes that are available, the types of surfaces you can use, uh, procedural versus nerves, I'll tell you all about it, and uh, creating surface models. All right, and now for the demo portion. Steve, I'm going to give you control. And Thank turn you, it Victoria. Over. Appreciate it. Excellent. Well, welcome everybody. We'll be today. We're looking at uh, our surfaces. Um, if you, we, I'm sure some of you were uh, with us last time when we did our basic primitive solids, these are the transverse, these are the surfaces. And in AutoCAD, a surface is a, is a simple 3D, or can be a complex 3D object, that has an infinitely sh thin shell. There's two types. The procedural, which we'll go over today, it can be associative and maintain relationships okay. with other objects. So they can be manipulated as a group. Um, and NURBS, which we'll go over in a future uh, webinar where they're not associative, they have control vertices that allows you to sculpt them in a more natural way. Um, there's a few different ways that we can do some surface creation. It's from profiles, uh, which you see here, um, using commands like extrude, loft, sweep, etc. And then you can create surfaces from other surfaces. So going along with the same thing that we've had before, We'll start here and use the 3D Basics workspace. And all the tools that we'll need for today can be found here in the Create panel. And one thing that I taught myself this time that I found to be very interesting is down here, you have this little pin. If you click the pin, that'll keep that panel open. Um, it was very beneficial for me when I was trying to go through um, and build this, build this webinar. So within our create panel, we have a few rows. We're going to be concentrating on this top row here. We have the surface network, where you can create a, create surfaces between spaces between several curves in the U and V direction. Now the U and V direction just represent the parameter value from one end of a curve slash surface to another. Um, essentially, think of it as a adjusted values for your X and Y. 
then you also have planar surface which you can create that surface by closed objects or a single line you have surface blend which you can actually create a surface between two edges of existing surfaces surface patch you can actually cap off an open surface surface offset where you can create those parallel surfaces almost make that double you know make it a double line or a double thickness as you can see in the small video here and then surface sculpt which this is where you can create one air to uh, watertight surface from multiple surfaces in addition when we had gone over if you remember the introduction to 3d modeling we use some of these commands, extrude, revolve, loft, and sweep. These commands have dual functionality. You can create a solid or a surface using these commands, um, which I'll go through again here. Using my shift and middle mouse button, you may see me do this often, because it's easier visually to see the 3Ds in a isometric or southeast or southwest view. We'll use the extrude command now down in the command line, which let me expand my command line a little bit more so we can see. Extrude. Select the objects to extrude or mode. What we want by default it's solid. We want surface. You select your line and press enter and you can create your 3D surface. Same can be done with a closed polyline like this rectangle here. I'm moving along down the line we have revolve again revolve works a lot like extrude where you start the command but we need to go make sure we're in mode again solid we want to change over to surface so then looking at the command line select the objects to revolve i want to select that uh, that object and then i can define my my center axes and we'll do this one at uh, 180 degrees. So we have another surface. You can also better visualize these. Unpin there, allow it to close, and we can look at this in a realistic view. We'll turn off our grid so it's a little easier to see. And then you can see in all the tessellation lines throughout here. Coming back into a 2D wireframe, and let's repin our panel here. Loft. Loft is a very interesting command. It creates that 3D solid or surface using different cross sections. Um, so you can make, you know, that air wing that they show here, or you know, you can create, you know models of let's say a site plan where you have all the elevation or land contours at different heights that everything's at um, you can make a nice smooth model so here we'll use this for this object here um, again select the cross sections and lofting order or mode and we want to make sure that this creates a surface selecting and lofting order you can see on how it starts to twist because of the profiles. Enter, and then hit enter again. This command does have multiple, multiple options within it, but we're just gonna go with the basics. And by changing back to a realistic view, you can see on how this object has spun around its axis. You can actually see still the profiles or the cross sections that we had used to create this object. Coming back into our 2D wireframe, and again, we'll repin this panel. We have a couple other objects here. We're gonna use the sweep command. Sweep command, again, will create that solid or surface by going along a path. Um, you can create a helix, or you know what looks like a spring, and you can create your profile, and then sweep it along the path. Here what I've done is I just created this small little closer and close profile and we are going to use the sweep command. Again you go into mode 
go to surface, you select the object to sweep, and you select your path. We'll unpin this for now and change from 2D wireframe to realistic. And you can see here on how it's actually created that surface. Now one of the challenges you may find is that you want this to actually, you want this groove to be on the top. That can be changed. We can cheat a little bit out of my, um, I'm just using Control Z to undo all this. We can cheat a little bit outside of my agenda here and we'll use that command I had shown you before, which is 3D rotate, which you'll find in the modify panel of the home tab within the 3D modeling workspace and it is right here, 3D rotate. A little quicker way instead of changing workspaces is you can just type in, go back to basics here, and you can type in 3D, 3D rotate, and that will enact the command as well. So I want to turn this up onto the XZ axis. So selecting the object, pressing enter, and since I'm flipping it up on, on the X, I want to select this red line here and 90 degrees. So now when I go to sweep, well, there's a Volker moment. Did not do exactly what I was expecting it to do. Let's try it on this 3D line we have here. You can see how it goes upwards. Sweep, select my 3D polyline, my object. Well, let's undo this. Let's go back. Love these Volker moments, don't you, Victoria? They're fantastic. They are fantastic. Hey, Steve, um, while you're, yes. while you're uh, working there, can I ask you a question? Of course you can. Um, we're being asked, uh, can you dimension the sweep or the loft after you created it? Can you dimension it? Um, you can dimension aspects of it. Um, for instance, let's look at the, you know, for instance, this line here. Because it's in the XY plane, uh, let's turn this upwards. So dimensions only go, will only work in an XY plane. So you have to continuously, if you're going to dimension any kind of 3D object, you will certainly want to um, change your UCS, and that will be, in, we'll go through on how to change the UCS or the user coordinate system um, so that you can, so that you can see how it goes in a, in a future webinar. Well, you can, for instance, this object here, you can dimension. You'd have to go back into your drafting annotation, and you'd have to put multiple dimension points. Um, so it's a little bit of work that would have to go into it. You know, you can dimension the entire height. You can dimension from the midpoint or a QUA for a quadrant point, which this is not going to let me because it's not it's spline and splines. Actually, now how did I create this object? It is a spline. Splines usually have multiple facets, um, but if it was just a polyline, you can dimension to get the actual segment lengths. You probably want to go from an endpoint to an endpoint, and then do the radius, the curves, and whatnot. Um, the loft again. Well, I'll show you a little thing here. We'll do look at it in the front view. And we'll go back, uh, and we'll go back to our 3D basics. And here, I'm going to, in the coordinates for the UCS, right now I'm in world, but I want this according to my view. And I'm in the front view, and if you watch down in the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see my axes flip. And now I'm in XY. 
So then you can come back into your drafting annotation and dimension. We can dimension from the top down to the bottom so you can get that height. Um, there are other 3D, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Model documentation tools that we will also go over in a future webinar. Um, ViewBase is a fantastic one where it actually will give you your third angle projections, your, your isometrics, your top, your side, and your front, and bottom views if needed. Um, Victoria, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I think it did. Excellent, excellent. So now what we're going to do is let's move all the way down here. And I'm going to show you how to use the Surface Network tool. And one thing that you want to make sure, make sure of doing, and I just did this, is you want to make sure that when you're rotating around, you remember where your UCS is. So I want to go back into the into UCS world. So now my X and Y axis are appropriate. And let's draw a we'll look in the top view here. And what we'll do is we'll go uh, use the spline command, and we'll just draw a nice sweeping spline. Uh, Shift and rotate that a little bit here. And let's draw another one. And we'll bring this, uh, let's bring this all the way out and around. Let's move. What you want to do is, to show this properly, I want to try to make this as elaborate as possible. We'll move this in the upward Z direction. Uh, let's do 10 feet. And then I'm going to just draw a line connecting these two ends. Lines are different than polylines and splines where you can actually change their start X and end Y. So they can go along the, and have an elevation change over their length. Come back to the create tool. And we'll pin this and we'll go surface network. So in the first direction, so I want to select these two because they're going in the same direction. And we'll select the last two lines because they're going in their own direction. Unpin this. We can look at it in a realistic view. And you can see how it's giving you that twisted sheet metal look. And that's a surface. Going into some other tools that we have, come on to this next drawing I have created here. Come back to the create, we'll pin this one back here. We're going to use the planar surface or plain surf command, which you'll find right here. So here, now these commands here, they have one function. They create surfaces, unlike the extrude, revolve, loft, and sweep, where they can create solids or surfaces. With these commands I'm going through now, there's no need to look at the mode because it's going to be a surface only. Here we want to specify first corner or object. So we can just make a rectangle. But I want to I want this object in front of us. So I'm going to select the object. So now you can see you have your surface. The next command we'll go over is surface blend. Now what I've done already is it's actually quite pretty easy to do. You create a circle and ext is another way to get to the command or click extrude. I apologize if I use the, the keystrokes. Uh, old habits are hard to get out of. I just made a little mistake there. You did not change did not change the option. So we'll go ahead and control Z back. I'll just draw the circle here. 
Go back and extrude and mode surface. And then you can create that 3D surface. Here though, I want to actually infill the top of this between these two circles, between these two circular surfaces, so that I can get one whole surface. Using the surface blend, it's going to ask me to the first sur the first edge and enter, and then the second edge, and then enter. And looking at this again in a realistic view, you can see now how it's covered that with a single surface. You can also do the bottom side if you like. We'll get rid of this grid here. Now create surface blend. Select one edge, enter. Select second edge. Oh, looks like I didn't select the right section. And then almost looks like a, like a really thick washer. All right. Going back in a 2D wireframe. What do we have next here? We have surface patch. This is so we can uh, create a new surface or cap to close an open edge of an existing surface. So I have the surface. I've created here, and I want to put a patch over it. Come back to the Create panel, Surface Patch, and it's going to ask you to select the edges. So I'll select these edges within here. To your wireframe, to realistic, and you can see on how it's it's changed. Now there's some other options that we have in here. Any positions or curvatures. These are all things that we'll go into at a later date on the differences of, of these functions. Go back in the 2D wireframe. We're going now into surface offset. So again, I've created this single line surface, but I want to offset the surface. I want it to be doubled. So we'll go into create surface offset, select the surface to offset, you can specify the distance and let's say uh, 10 units. We can bring it out or we can shrink it in, all by use of that single arrow. And that's how you use the surface offset. Now, surface sculpt. Now, what I have done here is, we'll look at this in realistic, is I've created six surfaces that intersect each other. AutoCAD is going to require that you have a watertight object, which means that there's no gaps, that each side intersects each other. Coming back into a 2D wireframe, create and surface sculpt. What we'll do is, again, select the surfaces of solid, sculpt into a solid. Select all these, press enter, and now this actually creates a 3D solid for you. And we'll look at this in a realistic manner. So you're able to create some pretty interesting geometry by using that tool. Um, Victoria, do we have any uh, additional questions before I get into the the floor lamp that we'll create? Uh, it's uh, it's interesting that you've been doing the um, conversion to a solid object because we've been getting a couple of questions about um, whether or not when you enclose the object in surfaces, whether or not it is a solid or it isn't. Um, so yes, um, so I'll go back into uh, this object here, the loft. What you would have to um, actually, no, let's do this. Let's look at this object here. Now what we have is we have the outside, 
the outer wall, the inner wall, the top cap, and the bottom cap. And I believe the function that you'd want to look for is convert to solid. And I'm looking for it um, because normally I don't use it. I don't know. I just, I don't know where it's located, but that I, is the command. Yeah, um, I just I always type as, it in. <laughs> as long as it's a uh, a watertight um, set mm -hmm. of surfaces, if there are any gaps at all, it won't work. Oh. Need to convert to solid. And select the objects. Oh, there is a gap somewhere. Uh, let's do this. Erase my line there. I might be able to do it now. Yep, it is not allowing me to um, convert to solid. There are other. F hmm. You know what we can do is let's see if we it, can get this okay. one. I think. Yes, do you? Yes, yes. I think it's okay if you can't convert it. Um, we were just asking about the, you know, the difference maybe between, just the basic difference between a solid and a surface um, where you can close it like that. Yes. So, I mean, if you enclose your, your surface completely, um, you should be able to make that into a solid. Um, there's a couple of things here. Thicken will convert that 3D with a specified thickness. So, for instance, uh, I have this here. If I click Thicken and select the objects to thicken and give it a thickness of, let's say, uh, I don't know, you know, one. Now this has become a 3D solid. Um, there are some other things that we will go over in, in future uh, webinars where you'll be able to convert um, polyface mesh objects to a solid. It's something that we that I've encountered many times um, with, and it's just how other programs, like for instance Revit, um, 3D models exported from Revit usually come out as polyface meshes if the option is not changed within um, Revit itself. So there's a little conversion you'll need to do when it comes into AutoCAD. Um, what we'll do here is let's go back to the we'll go back to 3D basics. I don't want to cheat too much away from my uh, my um, uh, agenda. I thought I almost, I almost got a little excited there. I thought I found my uh, my solid, my convert to solids. Anyways, so what we'll do is we're going to use a lot of these tools that we've found, that we've learned here between these two files, and we're going to create a floor lamp. Now there's two different ways to do it. Um, I'm going to show you the a little more convoluted and a little more difficult way, um, and then show you the easier way. So I have these circles. And these are all my uh, cross sections. These two being the shade, and then the rest of these being the actual body of the lamp. Going into loft, again, I want to make sure in mode I am to such a surface, and then you can select your profiles. Press enter and you're complete. Again we want to do loft, making sure that we are still in surface and then select them in, in order. Here we have approximately a fairly disproportionately sized lamp. The other way that you can create a, you know, an object of this nature, it's a lot easier, especially if it's going to be a circular object, is using the revolve command. So click revolve, making sure that the mode is set to surface. I'm going to select the object to revolve, selecting my axes, and we'll go 360 degrees. As you can see, it's a little better than the loft. The loft, because you're doing it versus the cross sections, it wants to come in and then come back out. Um, and all depending upon how you want it, how you want it to be created.
We'll do a, the revolve again, selecting the lampshade now. And you have to be careful with all these different lines. You really want to make sure that you're still selecting your 2D geometry. So knowing that it's the center here, I can just select an arbitrary point using my ortho. And again, 360. Same thing will go for the light bulb. Make sure I select that. And up and 360. And just for visualization, we can change this to lots of windows popping up. Select the object, then the properties dialog box. You can tell that's a surface type of revolve. Here I want to just change the color to yellow. The lampshade, we can make red. And if you look at it in a realistic view, you have your lampshade. Also what you can do is we can actually drop a light in here. You know, according to Corey, if I'm, if I'm correct, the last one that we did together was for lighting, correct? That uh, was general uh, general rendering. General uh, we'll be touching on lighting in, a, I think, two months or so? I believe so, yes. Uh, we can just create a small point light. We'll keep the default light. You can, you can do it easy. I'm sorry? Looks like Victoria, you're having a little. I said you can do a tease. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I think I'm having trouble with my audio. Um, just a little teaser, a little light there. Um, and then when we just do a, let's just do a quick render here. Render a window. Medium. We'll just do a quick low. Right size. Uh, here we go. Well, didn't work exactly the way I thought, but you know, that's why Victoria is doing the lighting. Um, but you can create an awful lot of objects with the surfaces. It's, uh, it's actually really awesome tools to use. You can get into some really, really fantastic geometry while creating these things. What we'll do is uh, bear with me one second here. Uh, do we have any other questions? Uh, we do have a couple questions if you're ready for them. Sure, I would love to. Okay, so let's start with. Um, let's see, sorry, I had to find it again. Oh, um, can you, so with uh, when you're lofting to create a surface, can you uh, demonstrate how um, uh, the, the order in which you pick the objects to, to loft? So can you go one way or then the other? Um, is there a, does, a, does the order matter? Uh, the order doesn't necessarily matter. I guess it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, where is my render here? Oh, it's not in this one. It is in Surface Basic. Hold on one second. I want to grab all these objects to show you. All right, we can delete the surface. So. I believe when I did the loft for this one, I had selected the top going down. Um, since I can't remember, great thing about AutoCAD, you can create and delete as needed. Um, so coming here in the loft, in lofting order, I can start from the bottom. Or I can go from the top down. And it's all dependent upon what you're looking for. There are some, it depends on the geometry. Um, 
where you might get a weird edge on a line because of the way that you're going down. Um, I've seen this happen when I would be building 3D models of site plans where I could only loft in a certain order, and it's a matter of a trial and error, but most of the time you should have no problem going top to bottom or bottom to top. Um, you do not want to select out of order though, because that can cause confusions. For instance, coming down to here to there creates You know, it, again, your the, the surface derivatives are not in the same direction, so you always want to go in the in one direction, top to bottom, or bottom to top. I think that was the intent of the question too. Uh -huh. We got some clarification. We got some clarification. That was the intent of the question. You know, what happened if um, you selected them like one, three, two, four? Yes, it. Yeah. yeah. It, so it doesn't necessarily work that way. It doesn't play well. <laughs> Cool. All right. Um, you want another one? Absolutely, please. Okay. Is there any way to do a contour map from XYZ data? That's a fantastic question. Um, if oh, and I wish oh, I should have been better prepared because that would have been a great example to show. You're, um, you're a civil you, guy too. I can tell uh, you're getting excited about it. <laughs> you can. Um, you. You would need, an, if you're using survey data, um, you're better, I mean, honestly, using a program like Civil 3D will be a better option, a better solution. However, if you don't have access to that, but you do have all the elevation points, you can, um, you can't automatically generate, but you can connect the dots using a spline or a polyline using the arc function within the polyline. Um, one of the best things to probably do um, let's do this. let's see if I can do this here real quick. Let's we'll do a little uh, a little little X there, and let's just copy this to up here, there, there, and there. Using the polyline, you can go from point to point to point point and then using the polyline edit you can actually spline it so it gives you that approximate curve um, and then uh, let's say we just close uh, let's do the SPL come out a little bit and we'll close this off use the join command to join these two together so let's say that's your, you know, your 10 foot elevation, and we'll offset that in, you know, let's say five units. Uh, let's make something a little more exaggerated here. Offset, let's say, you know, 20 units. And move this upwards, um, F8, and let's say we move it up, uh, I don't know, five feet. And let's say we want to do another one. Yeah, we'll move this one up. Let's say let's say they're five foot contours or five foot elevation changes. Using the loft command again, mode surface. It's it's a little exaggerated, but you know that could be you know the side of a, you know, the sheer side of a cliff or a hill or something like that. So you can create, if you have the points, you connect the dots, you spline your curve, you gotta, you have to create closed polylines to be able to, you know, have those closed cross sections for the loft command to work. It will not work on an open cross section. Um, and then you can create your 3D surface. Um, it works really well. If you're using a program like, let's say, AutoCAD Architecture and you're building a house and you want to show what the land would look like on the outside for a render, um, this is a, surfaces are not as heavy within the, within the program and in the, in the file as, say, 3D solids. So you might be better off just creating a 3D surface to emulate what your land will look like.
You know, it's funny too. Victoria and I were talking. We were putting this together, and that was the example that I really want that I was thinking of doing. And I went with the lamp. So I'm really glad you had asked that question. You got to bring it up anyway. That's good. <laughs> All right. Um, hmm. We don't have a whole lot of questions today. Um, there okay. was one more asking about. Uh, oh, wait a second. One, one sec. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Can you take a 3D surface and unfold it into a flat sheet to cut shape? That is a fantastic question. Um, unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, AutoCAD does not have that ability to unfold it. There are programs that we do have that have that ability, um, and I'm guessing this would probably be more of a question regarding uh, Regarding sheet metal work or anything like that, um, I do know that Autodesk Inventor. Oh, sorry. Um, I was just suggesting uh, Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is actually a fantastic yeah. program. Um, Inventor as well. Inventor, um, and then if you're looking at steel design, uh, one of our newer products, Advanced Steel, has that ability to show unfolding in their uh, documentation. So we do have uh, approximately 15 minutes left. What else can we show? Do you have anything else in mind? Or uh, there was one more question. It's yes. not necessarily, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's related or not. Um, the calling icon on the ribbon. Yes. Good calling on. Uh, somebody was just asking what that was. Um, I don't know if you know anything about it. Or well, it's... Describe it's, hmm, you know, that's a good question. I don't exactly know what the calling is. Uh, let's see. Uh, is that Nomad? F1, go to the help. F1, go to the help. It is. Okay, so it's just really... Um, it's just really your your view, you know, no object culling, sub-objects are rolling over 3D objects, highlights all the objects, including the sub-objects. Um, one, rolling over 3D objects only, only highlights the sub-objects that are normal in the current view. And then selecting 3D objects by dragging selects only the objects that are normal in the current view. So uh, if things were hidden behind, um, then they wouldn't be, then they would not be selected. What our plans are um, is to spend time in each panel going over these different um, these different functionalities. Um, the three D mod well the three D design of services and solids have certainly changed. Um, I can remember when you had to use the control button to select a face on a box. For instance, actually, let's draw a box behind here. See if I can get it right. So, calling is off. You can see the difference in how it wants to get selected. Um, I can't really see there. For instance, if I want to just grab, you know, using the press pull command that we had worked on shown a while ago. See how it automatically is grabbing my faces when I highlight over them? It used to be that you would actually have to hold down control to grab those. Um, here, you know, it would be within the filter. You know, you can filter out your vertexes, um, your edges, your faces. Um, you can show the history of your solids. Um, And then you can, you know, change your sub-object selection mode, you know, for your drawing view component. Did I, did, uh, Victoria, did I answer the question, or? I, I think so, um, okay. considering it's not, it's a little out of scope, I think, for today mm -hmm. as well. So it, maybe we can go into detail on that if people are interested in it uh, in a future webinar. Um, could, could you go back and show how to flip the object in 3D? Yes, 
Yes. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which object's being referenced, but I. I think um, I don't know which object to f would want to flip, but we can use really anything. Oh, I got some big objects here. Let's delete out some of these things here. I believe. Well, I did lose my. Well, let's come into here. We'll come into Surface Basic, and we'll take these objects of this surface here, and let's turn it turn it on its side. So the command is 3D rotate. You select your object, and then decide what axis you would like to rotate it on. I want to rotate it on its side, coming towards me, so flipping it up up. Uh, uh, using the x-axis as the, the focal point. So selecting that. That's fine. And you can see on how I'm in the ortho mode, so it'll change. Let's say I want to do it 45 degrees. And then you can, that's how you can flip an object. It works really well when you're going to use sweep. Um, and do just show you how to do a helix, which is the helix command, or it also can be found in the 3D modeling workspace. So you create your circle and your height, and let's say 10 feet. So I'm gonna start off small and high, and we'll go. As you can see, I changed the radius so it goes from a small radius to a large radius, and it's about 10 feet high. And here, let's just draw a draw a circle. But I want to rotate this so it's flat on here. Use the 3D rotate command. And I'm having a hard time seeing the right axis, so again, that shift center button I want to flip it up 90 degrees. We'll move the center to there. And we'll use a sweep command. And that's how you'd use the 3D orbit to, I mean, I'm sorry, 3D rotate to flip the object up so you can align it perfectly. Very cool. Now, are there any other questions I can answer here? Uh, I'm checking. Hmm. Uh, what's the difference between 3D rotate and rotate 3D? I don't. Uh, I don't think rotate 3D is a command. Yeah. Oh, there is a rotate 3D. Huh. That is interesting. I believe. Let's find out. Hmm. Is it an older command, maybe? It might be. Might be an a legacy command. command. Mm-hmm. Yep, this is a legacy command. I would definitely suggest um, using the 3D rotate um, because what it does is 3D rotate is going to give you these handles that will help determine on which axis you can flip or you want to flip your object. The rotate 3D. It's <laughs> even in the help file it tells you to use the gizmo available 3D move and 3D rotate because it doesn't give you those axes handles uh, those axis handles. So it kind of comes down to preference too. I mean, if you're used to using rotate 3D, it's it's got the same functionality and it's just um, been replaced by 3D rotate. Absolutely, absolutely. And kind of gizmo, yeah.
All right. Well, um, we have five minutes left. Uh, Victoria, do we want to run the the last poll? Yeah, the final poll one. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what I'll do is uh, I'll take back control of the screen and uh, get that up and running. All right. Okay, we just saw the demo. Now we've got some additional resources for you. The Autodesk Knowledge Network community. And then Steve has provided some uh, links about creating 3D surfaces, uh, procedural surfaces, the surface modeling workflow, converting objects to procedural surfaces, commands for creating procedural surfaces, more about creating and modifying surfaces, blending surfaces, trimming surfaces, and offsetting surfaces. So that should help get you started uh, with surfaces in AutoCAD. Uh, up next, so today we talked about scratching the surface. Um, next week, uh, Nam and Volker will, will actually be back um, to talk about working with layers. So we've touched on layers before in the past. They're going to get a little more in detail for you. Um, back to basics, after that we're going to talk about navigation tools and the UCS uh, the following week. Um, after that, on July 30th, we're not sure what we're talking about yet, but it should, uh, we'll come up with something good. Um, following that, we'll have another 3D webinar on uh, materials. So you can visit autodesk.com slash help dash webinars to register for the webinar series here. Um, build your AutoCAD IQ. And then if you want to leave us additional feedback, just follow the link here, autodesk. Sorry, it's autode.sk slash AutoCAD webinars. Hey, Victoria. Can I yes. quickly interrupt one thing about yes. layers? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Those, a lot of commands uh, that I was gonna, I'm going to cover are from Express Tools. Uh, and as you know, Express Tools is not in LT. However, those commands for the layering were incorporated into the main software, so uh, all, most of the layer commands that were in Express Tools are available in AutoCAD LT, so those people are using benefit as well. Oh, great. So everybody will have access to them. That's, that's good to know. Thanks, Naman. Okay, so for the Autodesk uh, Help Webinar Series, check out the landing page. You can leave questions after the presentation for us. Uh, the link will also be available in your webinar reminder. And you can leave feedback on the current webinar or your future ideas for webinars, suggestions, and additional feedback you can send to autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, build your AutoCAD IQ, because we do have webinar series for other um, products as well. So you want to make sure that it gets to us. And that's it. Um, do we have any additional questions? Oh, wait a second. Oh, boy. Yeah, there's a f I see a few. Um, you know, one of the questions was, is there a way to make a surface as a boundary? Oh. Um, and essentially, it's to set the, you know, set a pump on top of concrete or move something. You can move objects in 3D. And um, this might be the last question we have. I get about a minute left. Steve? Yes. Um, we do need to run that final poll before you oh, get yes. into that. So okay. I'm going to give you control, but I'm going to run the poll. Excellent. Um, Thank you. Okay. So the Just question. a second here. Yep. Yep. All right. There it is. So the did question you learn was, something? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did, oh, sorry. Did you learn something new in today's session? Uh, yes or no? Okay. Go ahead and answer that. And it looks like 97, 98%, 96% say yes. Excellent. Well, while that's running, and we've got about 30 seconds left, um, it's very easy to move objects in 3D. You don't necessarily have to add, enter in that Z value, but you do want to have a reference point. So I just drew the rectangle, and let's, for the sake of argument, pretend that both of these objects are the same size, and this is the pump. Using the move command, select your objects, your base point, 
and then your top point, so then you can move it upwards. You always want to make sure that you have the same common reference point when moving so that there is uh, no issues and your objects don't end up in the middle of space. Um, so it does look like we are at the top of the hour now. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, I want to thank uh, my colleague Victoria Nauman for helping out as always. Yes, thank you very much.